Hey, it's been a while since I took you on the road trip, huh? Let's change that. So last time we left off, Trevin and I had been driving for a while trying to get through Texas and we hadn't even made it halfway at this point. We had just gotten out of San Antonio and we found this little campsite and we actually stayed there for a couple days. When we got there it was nighttime, so we didn't really do much, we just kind of packed ourselves away and we slept for the night. But the next morning we got up and we started looking for firewood. Now the thing was, I was really sick. I actually started getting really sick during this time. And I have a little bit of a video to share with you guys. All right, guys, I wanted to show you guys what we're up to. Uh, excuse my voice, I am a little sick. I think I've got the Omicron Percy I-8 version of this freaking COVID thing, but either way. So there's a little pond way over there. We're grabbing some water, we're throwing it in the Sawyer squeeze and then filtering it into the Kelly kettle. Then when it's in the Kelly kettle, we boil it and then we're transferring it over here to let it cool and then we're putting it back in here. So we're double purifying the water that's out here and the only reason we're doing that is because that pond over here is really close to that bathroom. So I just wanna make sure that uh, we're not getting any poopy particulates in uh, our drinking water situation. So there's Trevin over there grabbing another bag for the filter. And then when that's done boiling, we'll throw it into that, throw that into there, and uh, repeat the process until our container's full of water. So if that wasn't clear, the reason we were double filtering this stuff was because it was right next to the porta potty and we weren't sure if there was maybe some leakage in there. So we took the water, filtered it through a Sawyer squeeze, boiled the water, and then we put it in the six gallon jug. And that was pretty much good enough for us. And we did that all day until it was full. After a while, when we were done doing all that, Trevor and I decided to throw this foam football around that I had brought with us. And we were just kind of relaxing through the day, just having a good time, throwing ball back and forth. When we see these two girls come out of the woods and they're hauling wood in this big wagon. This wagon looked like it was one of those fiber wagons that breaks down and they were mostly grabbing twigs and sticks and stuff, and every so often they'd look our direction, and we're dudes, every so often we're looking their direction, and we see them walk back into the woods. Now, Trevin and I had a huge pile of wood. We spent a lot of that morning just collecting as much as we could, and I felt kind of bad because I was like, okay, there's probably, there's probably not much left for anyone else in this campsite, but who cares, we're comfortable. So later in the day, it's maybe five to seven o'clock and we decided to make ourselves some burgers. While we were making burgers, there was a point where we had one of those Bic lighters and it totally had gone out. So Trevin tosses it in the fire and we're just sitting there talking with each other and I forgot that it was in the fire. So there came a point where we're making these burgers and I kneel down, <laughs> I get right up into the fire, right where that Bic was and it blows up in my face. It didn't singe my eyebrows, it didn't take hair off my, my face or anything, but my eyelashes were curled over because they'd been burned. So we sit down and we're eating our meal and I get up and we're taking shots of Jaeger and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take some of the firewood that we have because we have an excessive amount and I'm gonna go bring it to those girls. I'm gonna go see if I can find their campsite and just give it to them. And Trevin's like, oh, you're gonna go give those girls your wood, huh? And I was like, hell yeah, I am. <laughs> so I pick up a healthy handful and I walk down and it didn't take too long for me to find them. And I was like, hey, um, hey, I just, I'm not trying to be creepy or anything. I saw you guys walking around earlier and you were picking up firewood, but I only saw you guys had sticks. My buddy and I, we have a crap load and I wanted to offer you what we have. Now, the girls were already drinking at this point, so they were a little intoxicated and you could tell. They were super bubbly, they were really energetic and really excited, and they're like, oh my god, that's so sweet, thank you so much! And they invited me over to just kind of hang out with them for a little bit. So I sat down and I'm talking with them, and I had actually been playing music earlier in that day on my ocarina, and uh, they had mentioned that. They were like, were you guys the ones playing? I heard guitar and a flute, and I was like, yeah, that's my buddy and I. And they're like, that was so cool. So we're sitting there chatting for a little bit. They tell me their names are Hannah and Willow. And I said, hey, um, I gotta get back, but if you guys want later in the evening, come on by our campsite and hang out with us. Like I said, we got plenty of fire. We can make some hot dogs. Just hang out and have a good time. And they're like, is your friend cool like you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're both chill. And they're like, cool, yeah, maybe we'll see you. 
I get back to our campsite and I tell Trevin that it went very smoothly and maybe they'll come and join. And we sit down and we're making some asparagus, just kind of hanging out. And maybe an hour or two later, we hear these two girls start walking to our campsite. Yuffie! So the girls show up and they're introducing themselves and everything is awesome. We're all having a good time. There was a point in the night where it, it actually, it was dark at this point. The fire was the only thing illuminating us. And the conversations, I mean, we were drinking Bacardi, we were drinking Jaeger. Uh, I think the, the girls had also had a couple beers. The conversation got a little flirty a couple times. One of the girls started talking about polyamory and how everyone is basically already in a relationship with each other. She's like, yeah, I'm in a relationship with you. And she points at me and she's like, I'm in a relationship with my friend here and with him, you know? And, and we're all sitting there like, really? <laughs> <laughs> After that, Hannah started talking about the night before. She said that she heard coyotes off in the distance howling and making noise. And that worried both the girls. And they were like, you know, it would be kind of nice if maybe we had um, a couple guys there to protect us. You know, like it was it was flirty. And it, it was just like, OK, well, damn, you know. So we must have been chatting there for about an hour or two when all of a sudden these two guys come out of the woods and they walk up to our campsite and they're like, hey, um, we're here camping with our family and they just went to bed, but we're not ready to go to bed. Would you guys be cool with it if we pop on in and hang out? And everyone's sitting there like, yeah, come on in, dude. Like, let's make a party out of this. So the guys sit down and they start introducing themselves and right off the bat, they just kind of clashed with us. Don't get me wrong. Trevor and I had no problem with these guys, but the girls they took issue with them. There were things that these guys were saying that the girls just, they were not interested. They were not interested in having these guys around. There were a few moments where the conversation got kind of tense and awkward. And I think it was something around, like these girls seemed like hippies. And that, that to me, I'm like, awesome. And the girls would ask the guys, so what is it you want to do with your life? And one of the guys said, um, I want to have gold chains around my neck. I want to be rich. I want to have necklaces for my penis. And I know he's dicking around, you know, get it. <laughs> but either way, the girl did not like that answer. She was like, oh, you're going to spend your whole life trying to make money. That's such a waste of your time. Why not just live? And then the guys are sitting back. They're like, what in the world? You know, and, and I think they were brothers. The, the one who said that was kind of chill. He seemed fine the whole time. The other one seemed annoyed at the fact that he was there now and he kept like rolling his eyes and making snide comments and stuff. So obviously there was a huge clash and I'm sitting there like, <laughs> you guys are cock blocking us, man. This is terrible. So eventually the girls have enough and they stand up and they're, they're like, hey, we're going to take off. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your night. We'll see you later. And I'm sitting there like, all right, yeah, uh, it was good meeting you guys. Um, where, where are you guys headed? And they're like, well, we're headed to Florida. And I was like, well, that's perfect. So are we like Trevor and I, we're headed to Florida too. Maybe we'll catch you while you're there. And they're like, yeah, that sounds cool. And they take off. After that, Trevor and I just kind of quietly got up and started putting things away, cleaning dishes and stuff. And the guys just awkwardly sat there for maybe another 20 minutes before they got up and they're like, yeah, well, all right, we're going to go to bed. And I was like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I get up the next morning and I'm a little discouraged by the events that happened the other day. I mean, those girls were really flirty. They were really digging us, but those other two guys were just not harmonious with them. So it just didn't work out. And I was like, ah, whatever, you know, I get out of the van and Trevin runs over to me and he's like, dude, good news. And I was like, what? He said, I found a postcard on the bench under a rock. So I grab it from him and I'm looking at it and I was like, wait, oh my God, this is from Willow and Hannah. So I read it and it says, Christmas was actually pretty fun this year. Nice to meet y'all. If you want to line up in Florida, use our numbers below. And they wrote their phone numbers down. So I'd totally forgotten that it was Christmas the day before. And so this came as like a nice little after Christmas present. I was like, hey, we get to see them again. That's really cool. Now I look up from the card and I'm looking around the campsite and I realize that there are people everywhere now. It seemed like whenever we got to a campsite, it didn't matter where it was. The next morning, there were going to be people on quads revving their engines, going crazy. And I'm just sitting there like, Jesus Christ, there, these these ATV Colts are just following us everywhere, man. All right, let's get out of here. And he's like, yeah, we've stayed here about two days now. Let's just take off. As soon as Trevor and I drove out into the city, we started looking for places that we wanted to see. And this was actually kind of perfect because Trevin had lived in Houston before, so he already knew all the sites for me to go and look at. We ended up going to this giant museum, and I don't remember what it was called, but they had a huge butterfly exhibit. And this was one of the coolest things that I'd seen on the trip. 
you basically buy yourself a ticket and then when the time comes you're able to walk through this museum and before you get to the butterflies they actually have showings of big beetles tarantulas skeletons of different insects and they have all these boards that teach you all about these different insects it was really neat to learn all this and to see all this the only annoying thing was that you're not allowed to bring any beverages into the butterfly exhibit at all which does it that totally makes sense but i had just bought myself a coffee so i had to leave it with the door greeter and i was like can you just hold on to this and he's like yeah that's totally fine and i was just like i just bought it i didn't even get a sip of this thing i just bought it and now i have to just drop it here but either way i'm just stalling because i want to be able to show you a bunch of butterfly stuff so we get into the giant butterfly exhibit and it was gorgeous I don't even remember how many different species of butterfly were in this thing, but it was, you know, like those biblical scenes of the Garden of Eden. That's what this was when you walk in here and it's just this big dome and there are people all over the place taking photos and just looking around in awe of all the different colors that are flying around them. Everything was so artistically set up. They had these little tin uh, scales with a bunch of fruit on them that the butterflies would go and fly onto. And as butterflies would move to the different sides of the scales, the scales would tip. There were a bunch of blue ones. I think the ones that were most amazing were the ones that were brownish on the outside and then they opened their wings and they're just the brightest blue. I just loved being here. They had this waterfall that went from all the way to the top of the dome down to the very bottom and you had to walk down the spiral staircase to get down to the bottom. And then at the bottom, they also had a snake exhibit, which I'm not exactly sure why they would have reptiles in there. It was supposed to be an insect museum, but whatever. Trevor and I were in there for about an hour, and there was multiple points where we were just split off. I was like, you do what you're going to do. I'm going to see if I can get some footage because this, I mean, this is cream right here. I want to make sure that I get as much of this as possible. After that, we walked around the city for a little bit, and we found this park. Now, again, Trevin had lived here, so he had been to all these places before, so he wasn't really anxious to stay in Houston for as long as we had stayed in Austin and San Antonio. But he shows me around this park, and it was really cool. There, there was, like, this giant spiral walkway that got up to the top of this lookout, and it was really neat because then you could see the entire park and you could see a lot of the city. I gotta say, um, San Antonio and Austin seem to have cooler buildings than Houston did. Houston reminded me a lot of Portland, Oregon, at least in the way that it's really compact, uh, big city living, but it doesn't really have a lot to look at unless you live there and know where to go. After we were done in Houston, we knew that we wanted to go find a place to settle down. The past few days were kind of stressful and anxious, only because I was still pretty sick. Uh, Trevin was going through all of his memories that he had gone through when he was living there, so there was a lot of information going through his head. Uh, so we were, we were both like wanting to relax. So we found this spot on the beach and apparently in Texas, if you camp on the beach, it's all free camping, which I thought was really cool. So we get to the beach, I pull off onto the side of the road and we realize we don't really have a lot of room off of the side of the road, especially not for a tent. So I try to get out of there and my van gets stuck. So Trevin took some pieces of wood that he had found on the side of the road and he dug them up under my wheel and we used those to get out of there. And a few miles down the road, we found another spot right on the beach that was actually pretty nice, had a lot of area for us, and we stayed there for the night. So we wake up the next morning and it was so hot and humid that I actually had to open up all the windows in my van just so I could breathe a little bit. And Trevin had to do the same thing. We get up and we walk outside and there are people everywhere just walking up and down the beach and we thought this was really neat. So we're sitting there, we're making ourselves some sandwiches, we're eating for a little bit. And then we notice all these seagulls start landing. They, they're they landing right next to us and they're walking up to us and we're sitting there looking at them and they're giving us the eye. So we took our some of our bread and we started throwing it to them. And this was really cool because I had, I had like given bread to birds before, but these seagulls, let's just say they gave us a really cool memory and I'll show you that now. Now at this point, we spent quite some time just driving out of Texas. We wanted to get out of this state. It was too big and we'd already seen as much as we were going to see. So our next state was Louisiana. Now, what was interesting about Louisiana, okay, we got 15 minutes out of Texas. We just left. We just crossed the border and I had to go to a gas station. So I get to this gas station, I get out and I start pumping my gas and I hear this guy talking to this other person over at the gas station and he's like, yeah, no, my dog, you know, he's having himself a goddamn problem. <laughs> now, here was the weird thing. 
We were in Texas for probably a week and a half. Not a single person in Texas had a southern accent. Or at the very least, they did, but it was either pretty soft or it was one of those iconic Texas southern drawls, right? But you go 15 minutes across the border and you got people like, yeah, well, my cousin the other day, you know, she came down with the syphilis and we're going to try to figure out how to get her fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so Trevor and I fill up the gas and we drive down the road for a little bit and I was like, dude, I want coffee. And he's like, yeah, me too. So we pull off on this dirt road and we grab a bunch of sticks and we put them in the Kelly kettle and we get up a fire going and we start cooking ourselves some coffee. And while we're doing it, we're making fun of the accents that we just ran into. I was like, isn't it kind of crazy that we were in Texas for a week and a half and I maybe heard one accent. We get across the border and the first thing is a southern accent. And he's like, yeah, and it's everywhere too. I walked into the store and they're there too. So we'd sit there and we started making jokes. We'd say, yep, well... I'm trying to get them raccoons off my property. And then he would be like a neighbor that I'm talking to. And he'd be like, yeah, well, it's kind of rough. You know, those critters are everywhere. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, well, so my sons went to school the other day. He'd go, yeah, well, is he doing well in class? <laughs> And we just did that. We just did that the entire time we made coffee. The entire time, which took us maybe like 30 minutes to make this coffee. For whatever reason, it was just not wanting to go this day. And we just sat there the whole time entertaining ourselves by going, yeah, so what's the weather like today? So eventually we get our coffee and we're driving down the road for a little bit. And we get to this town called Lafayette. And while we're there, we decided let's do ourselves some laundry. So we go inside, we're doing our laundry. And I was like, you know, I got to pee. So... I walk into the laundromat and there's this lady that's sitting there and she's just running the thing. And I was like, hey, um, can I use the bathroom? And she goes, no, someone's in there. I was like, oh, uh, all right, well, that's fine. So I start walking around the neighboring area and I cannot find a single place with a bathroom. And I was like, what in the hell? Now, this is bad enough. There was a storm and it just started pouring. And so I'm getting rained on and it was buckets. I was getting drenched. It wasn't just like this light, cute little thing. It was pouring rain. So I'm sitting there, and the longer I'm sitting out there, I'm just drenched with, with rainwater, and I cannot find a place to go pee. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm just going behind a building. I just do not even care. So I ran behind a building. I'm, I'm looking to make sure that no one's, like, you know, going to see me, and I do my business, and I walk back inside, and Trevin's like, hey, did you find a place to go pee? And I was like, I just went behind that building over there. He's like, yeah, the, the guy in the bathroom finally got out of there. I was like, really? Wait a minute. I was probably looking around for 25 minutes. And he's like, I know, I know. And apparently he was in there for an hour before we even showed up. So Trevin had talked to the lady and apparently this guy walks in and says, hey, can I use your bathroom? And she said, no, it's for customers only. And he said, I just want to wash my hands. And she's like, oh, okay, fine. And then he walked in there and he was in there for an hour and 20 minutes. Did he even have hands left? So we finally get all our laundry done, we pack it up into the van, and right next to this laundromat was a taco place. So it, it was just this little taco truck too, which is kind of nice. I always love food trucks. So we walk up there, we order ourselves some food, and it was great. So we start driving back through Louisiana, just trying to find a spot to stop off. So we found this little camping area that on campsites.net told us that it's literally right next to a gun range. So you're going to be woken up by the sounds of shooting. And Trevor and I are like, dude, there's been shooting freaking every day since we've been on this trip. That doesn't matter. So we pull in, we find ourselves, we go all the way to the end and we find ourselves this little spot. And it was fine, except for there were a crap load of bugs. There were more bugs here than I had seen the entire trip. So Trevor and I start getting into my van and there are two things that I realize. Firstly, my flashlight is gone. I don't know where it's at. And I've been using this flashlight the entire time I was on the road trip. So we tore my van apart looking for it and we could not find it. The second thing we realized was when we stopped initially in Louisiana to fill up the, the van, I had taken my gas cap off and put it up on the pump and then left it there. So now I didn't have a flashlight and I didn't have my gas cap. So either way, we're looking around for a little bit when I know my gas cap is lost, but I was like, my flashlight's got to be in here. There's just no way we, I mean, where would we have even lost it? That doesn't make any sense. I had it accounted for literally the day before. It was just so strange and it's disappeared. I, I never found it. 
So at some point, it may have fallen out of the van and, and we just left it. So that sucked, and I knew at that point I had to go get another flashlight. But at this point in time, it's maybe 9, 10 o'clock. Trevor and I made ourselves some food, and we went to bed. So in the morning, we wake up, and we're making ourselves some sandwiches, and we realized how beautiful this place was. There was a river right down the way that we could go to and take a look at, and it was beautiful. There were trees all around us. The grass, it was like carpet. It was so cool. I mean, it was so easy to clean everything up. So we start packing up and this little dog starts running over to us and we're like, oh, who are you? So this man gets out of his car and he's running up and he's like, oh, hey, yeah, she's a friend to everybody. She knows no stranger. She just loves everyone. Sorry about that. He started telling us that this campsite used to be a lot cooler. It, there apparently used to be like a little fish area where you could catch fish and then take them and gut them and you could put them on a hook. There were places where you could tie up horses and ride the horses through the trail. They had a boat dock area before, they had these showers before, and they just stopped maintaining it once COVID hit. And he, he was a little disappointed about that. And he was telling us the whole thing. He's like, you guys should have seen this a year ago. It was beautiful. And we already thought it was beautiful. So I only imagine what it would have looked like before that. So we pack our stuff up and we start making our way out of Louisiana and into Mississippi. We got to this place called Gulfport. And this is where a sequence of really fun stories are about to begin. But that's unfortunately a story that I'm going to have to tell at another time. I thought I could tell so much more of this one because it, oh, it's so good. But I'm definitely running out of time and I have to stop it here. Thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to tell you how this story ends. We're almost halfway through. Truth is, I cannot tell you how amazing it feels that you guys sit here and watch these videos and, and go on this adventure with me. But I got to kick you out of the bus for now. I'll see you next time.